Pong is a classic game and it's also a very good game to convert into AR because it has very good additions in 3D and it also has a very good controller method for AR. So a paddle is very easy to turn your phone into a paddle. And so that's what we're going to be using. We're going to be using the phone as a control for AR, Pong. So it's good to do a quick rundown of the object that we will need and the functions that we will need. So we can count out the object right now. There are two paddles, a ball, and the wall, two goalposts. So that is six objects that we have. And so the functions that we will need, we will need a bouncing from the wall, and we will need a bouncing from the paddle, and we will need a scorekeeper, so something that can get the points every time they run into those things, uh, run into the end zones. You have about three functions there. Okay. We'll start by initializing some global variables that we'll use throughout this. We'll have the points that we will use for scorekeeping. So then we'll need an add box function, and that'll just add the basic mesh that we will need a few times throughout this. Then we will add some other initial variables that we we'll use throughout. So we'll have the current velocity, which will be the velocity of the ball, and then some instantaneous velocities for the velocities of the paddles. And we'll just label the ball sphere that we'll be using later. Now we're going to write out some of the functions that we're going to be using. So we're going to start with the bounce function. This will be the bounce off of the paddle and so what will happen is there'll be an inversion of z the speed of z and then we will also move it ahead one time so then we have to do wall bounce we need to specify which direction it will reflect off of but it's similar to the paddle bump but we will be using x's and y's so those are our, our planar coordinates and then we just need to move it ahead one time step again so we avoid double collision then we'll add a clear point so this will just remove the ball so this will be used when it enters the end zones and then we have to add point so this is what we'll we'll do to add the initial point. So we're going to be using a sphere. We'll specify the color of the sphere and we will give it some initialization values. So we'll use a polar vector to decide which direction it's going and then weight that with the value. So um, so the theta will decide which initial velocity it has and then we'll just give back the ball. And then now we have to use a detect collision code. This is heavily borrowed code. So I'll link in the description who it was. And then we need to decide what happens during the collision. So we will fetch a type from our collision objects. We haven't actually defined them yet, but we will define later types. And we will give a type of goal one, goal two, um, some players, and then the wall. And each one of these, we will add in the functions that they'll use. So for goal one, we will clear it, give a point player one, and then we'll increment their score by one. And then we will add a new ball. And then the same thing for player two. And then for when it hits player one or player two's paddle, we basically just need it to bounce off of that paddle. Okay, and then we have the wall bounce. And the wall bounce, we will decide which direction it bounces off of based on the direction vector. Uh, so the direction vector will either be pointing in the x or y direction, and that'll be how we decide which way it will bounce. The other thing to mention is that all these need breaks at the end because they do need to skip out of this loop once they run into a collision. Okay, and then for the coding of the objects, now we have to actually build out the objects. So we'll just use our build our add box that we defined earlier, and then we will just label some of our values with different value initializing values. Here's where we're going to be defining the types, uh, and we'll just go through with player one, player two, uh, goal one, goal two. And then for the walls, we do actually need to also add a backside as well. And we're we're going to use a wireframe for all of these just to make it a little bit easier to see what's happening. Pong historically has had a lot of wireframe versions, so I thought it was just kind of stylistically on point. And so then we're going to create a group and we're going to add them all to that group. And then that will be our interactive our thing that will collide. So I was thinking about adding web sockets here, but we're just gonna not gonna focus on that right now. So next up, we have to add the user position and the AI position updates. And so the user position is just going to follow what your phone is currently doing. And so that'll be automatic. And then we need to do that for the AI and the AI will slowly follow where the ball is. So it's going to be cheating and using the ball's information, but it makes it a lot easier. So we're just gonna do that. And then we have to set up the game loop. So our game loop is going to go, if the ball is around, update the ball. And so the ball is basically going to update as detect the collision, move the AI, and then and then move the ball sphere. So here we're using that basic kinematics of x equals vt plus x naught. So we're just incrementing it by the velocity with a little increment of time. And then we're going to update it. And then we will update the player position. I didn't actually use the function that we made here earlier, but this is what the function does. <laughs> 
vestigial code. Okay, so now we just need to animate it, render it. Um, we'll set up a function that a post function. So this is going to happen after another function happens. And then we will initialize it. And this is the part where we're basically just filling in boilerplate code that we've been using a lot before. So this is just the AR code. The one difference is that the init function in this, we are going to be handing the post function that we made earlier. So that just helps render some things after everything else happens so that we don't end up with things the game starting before we want the game to start. So our HTML is fairly similar to our other HTML files. The one difference we're going to have is a div that has score one and a div that has score two. And we'll just start those off both at zero. Okay, thanks. Have a good day.